<coughs> uh, good morning, everyone, dear uh, colleagues. Uh, first of all, I cannot say more than thank you so much, my dear uh, friend, Ambassador Kathleen. When she arrived to New York the first week, I think, she called me and she came to my office. And we had very interesting discussions about the work that we are doing. And she told me she wanted to get involved from the beginning. So today we see uh, the result, uh, how active you are, you and your mission, and your country and the, and the UN, which really we highly appreciate very much. And always when I receive an invitation from you, I tell my office always say yes. <laughs> Thank you. So I am delighted and very happy to be with you and with all of you. I think uh, the two uh, topics today in our agenda is very important and very timely, especially on also in our work at the UN Alliance of Civilizations. And you know, uh, just to brief you a little bit about what we are doing uh, uh, at the UN, as a UN uh, organization, our mission to achieve, at the end of the day, peace and security. That's what we are going to discuss today. But through four pillars. And if we can achieve that, working together, I think we, see it, we will see a different world. So our focus on the four pillars, starting with youth, education, media, and migration. And if we look around the world today with all the problems, it's coming from the, through, from the three or uh, four pillars that I mentioned. Uh, so I would like to take a brief moment to highlight that two themes selected for today's seminar, namely working together for peace, security, and human rights, and building trust and understanding, are two key topics on the international agenda and are in line with that what we do at the United Nations Alliance of Civilization. The understanding and implementation of the underlying notions of collaboration and trust have never been as important as this specific moment in the history of the United Nations and of the world humanity. Allow me to reaffirm that collaboration and trust are notions inscribed on the core identity of the United Nations family. Each and every member state ratifying the United Nations Charter has the duty and responsibility to embrace, advocate, and implement these values. At last, the crucial importance of these notions have been instilled on the imminent 2030 development agenda, which will seek to elevate the lives of billions through ambitions and transformative targets. And what we call it here at the UN, the SDGs, and, and in the coming days, from 25, 26, 27, the UN will host uh, a summit to discuss and, and adopt the SDGs uh, plan, which we hope this time will be, the commitment will be really because <laughs> and the last uh, MDGs, what, uh, the, the implementation was not up to the expectation and the world today going through a really difficult time, from poverty to climate change to uh, financial crisis, uh, and we see uh, uh, big disturbance <coughs> on the uh, security and stability. 
So uh, these two notions of trust and collaboration also answer the, answer the United Nations Secretary General's call on the margins of the White House summit on countering violent extremism earlier this year to address and tackle the root causes of radicalization, extremism, and terrorism. terrorism. Thus working together for peace, security, and human rights by building bridges and trust has never been as crucial as the midset of the current international and regional developments. I would like to recall the relevance of the introductory chapters of the United Nations Charter, <coughs> which states that we shall seek to unite our strength to live together and to maintain international peace and security. The celebration of 70th anniversary of the United Nations, as well as the transition from the Millennium Development Goals Agenda, as I mentioned earlier, to the 2030 Development Agenda, foster the right moment to reaffirm our commitment to these words and ideas. Dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, our world is alarmingly out of balance. While progress and prosperity have allowed greater freedom for the world population in terms of socio-economic development and mobility, we are still facing great inequalities and polarized perceptions. Not a day goes by without witnessing manifestations of intolerance and violence. Thousands of men, women, and children have been displaced due to security concerns or simply due to their religious or cultural affiliations. This challenge resulted in one of the worst humanitarian tragedy since World War II. Humanitarian crises resulting in displacement are traumatic and disrupt the social order of families, communities, and generations, oftentimes creating a fertile soil for violent extremist ideologies to, to take root. The waves of migrants throughout Europe by way of Syria and Iraq confirm the need to work together to create a common space for harmony and stability. This objective to secure human rights in regions led by conflicts will greatly allow tackling the causes lying behind the social breakdown which are driven by hatred, intolerance, and distrust. These critical observations compel me to admit that while this year is a year of achievements, it is also the year of an unfinished journey, a journey we started 70 years ago, carried on with the adoption of the Millennium Development Goals and which we seek to continue onwards with the adoption of the 2030 Development Agenda. It is a journey towards tolerance, inclusiveness and respect for each other's beliefs, religions and cultures. The veterans of the United Nations all know the very difficult standing at the doorsteps of this journey. Looking to establishing peace, security, and human rights require both hard work and unity. And I am a firm believer these two vital importance will allow us 
envision and implemented the various instruments that will guarantee trust and understanding. It is therefore our responsibility to ensure that the adequate collective collaborative means of action are undertaken in terms of knowledge transfer, capacity building, and solidarity, particularly among UN member states. The organization that I run, the UN Alliance of Civilization, is already contributing to this effort, in particular through the means of interreligious and intercultural dialogue, essential soft power tools to building bridges and inclusive societies. Allow me to mention that the impact of the UNAOC in promoting trust and dialogue has been reaffirmed on June 25th this year, when the UN General Assembly adopted by consensus the resolution United Nations Alliance of Civilizations. This resolution confirmed the importance member states attached to our role and the need of the international community to col collaborate on collective efforts towards understanding and respect for religious, culture, and human rights. My experience as a UN High Representative has confirmed my belief that we need the participation of all the approaches, tools, and actors involved in promoting trust and understanding through intercultural and interreligious dialogue. That is why I have already recognized the prime role played by education, youth, the media, uh, migration, sport, and religious leaders. These tools highly contributed to reinforcing communities, to building bridges and to foster peace and understanding among people of diverse walks of life. I have made my primary mission to invest in them. Our programs and activities seek to empower youth through education and greater involvement in international issues. Contemporary challenges are also youth Youth is challenges. They are the future and we need to empower them. Likewise, at the UNAOC, we make it a priority to invest on faith-based organizations, which are of a great support to our mission. Part of civil society, religious leaders help us reach out to the most vulnerable communities. We have seen their impact in and conveying trust and understanding. This power to convey trust and understanding was highlighted last April this year, when the Alliance, in conjunction with the Office of the Secretary General and of the President of the UN General Assembly, we convened a high-level thematic debate on the promoting tolerance and reconciliation, fostering peaceful, inclusive societies, mm -hmm. and countering violent extremism. This meeting was the opportunity for the United Nations to reaffirm the role of intercultural dialogue and promoting dialogue for trust at all levels of societies, including mm -hmm. within local communities and between states. Dear friend, ladies and gentlemen, I am convinced that working together toward peace, security, and human rights remains one of the top objectives to be achieved for the international community. To succeed, we need the MAP existing successful multilateral partnerships, both at the regional and intercultural levels. I have in mind working together toward enhancing coordination mechanisms that will help tackle the breach in peace and security. 
identifying the best practices that work in promoting human rights, launching a long-lasting and action-oriented multilateral process of collaboration in order to reinforce trust and understanding. Taking these recommendations into consideration will certainly reinforce the path of our common journey <coughs> towards successful future we wish for the world humanity. I thank you.